So today being Animal Sunday, I'm going to find a few animals and then show you a magic trick as I put them all inside me and not in the regular way that you might think. Luckily, where we live, we don't have to go very far to find the animals that I need. The first one is just down here, strangely enough, in our bedroom, or at least pretty close to it. We're very fortunate to have a colony of water dragons that live around our house. We'll have to go outside to show him to you. He's not worried. In fact, it's one of the things about reptiles is that they don't worry. As far as scientists can tell, reptiles don't have any emotions at all. They're very good at working out when it's time to run away, when it's time to fight, where to eat, and when it's time to reproduce. And that's about it. So here will be the first thing that goes inside me in a moment. Now, like many people, of course, we have a chicken in our bathtub. It's actually a bit of a long story, but unfortunately chickens are no good whatsoever for my purpose. So we're going to have to leave her to it. I've got to go and find something else. Why aren't chickens any good? Well, they kind of evolved in a parallel line. What you're looking at there is the descendant of the dinosaur. Also need a mammal, and what a cute one this is. She'll do just fine. And finally for my trick, I need a special kind of mammal, a primate some kind of monkey or ape. I have seen them live in the wild when I was in Africa once, but back in my day we didn't have digital video cameras, we only had really really expensive things that no one could afford to take anywhere. So I'll have to make do with this picture of one. Okay and now for the magic trick. If I hold very still I'm going to put all of those creatures into my brain. First in goes the lizard part. It helps me run on instinct, to fight, or to fly, or to freeze. And that's it. Because of the lizard part in me, I can throw a ball or ride a bike without thinking. I flinch from danger before I even see it coming. Although sometimes I attack before I've had time to think it through. And there's a mammal part of my brain, shared by dogs and cats and kangaroos. This part lets me feel. It lets me dream at night. No reptile has ever dreamt, but all mammals do. Every urge, every sadness, every joy, every sense of love begins with the mammal part of my brain. It helps me survive in a group. And then there's the chimp part, the primate part. It lets me think ahead. I can think, hmm, if I do this, then that will probably happen to me, instead of having to actually do it. So I can save myself a lot of pain and danger. But if my world changes, then it's harder to predict what's going to happen, and thinking turns to worrying. Worrying is something lizards never do. Primate brains are able to love others. It makes me love others enough to want them to love me back. To want it bad enough to lie to them, so they don't stop loving me. It makes me sometimes start to pretend to be someone I'm not, so that I'll be accepted. Lizards don't worry about that stuff, but I do. And then there's the human part, shared with dolphins and kind of with chimps, a really big forebrain. Now I'm self-aware, I can think about the future, I can have long-term goals, I can work for the kingdom of God even if it's hard, and I can also plot great evil. I can see when a fear isn't needed, which worries I can ignore. I have fears and doubts, but I can press on despite them. But the instinctive lizard part and the emotional mammal are more closely connected to my body, to my spinal cord. Sometimes those parts make me do the very things I decided rationally I don't want to do. Or they hold me back from doing what I think is right. The Apostle Paul expressed it this way, For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind. I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it's no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells within me. Now Paul didn't know anything about anatomy or brains. The best he could come up with was the idea that somehow there was this thing, sin, living at work in his body controlling him. Other Christians have called this thing inside, this sense that we're not ourselves, that we're not acting in the way we'd want to, the devil or a demon. 
But given what we've learned about brains, I think the best metaphor isn't sin, as if that's some separate thing inside us, or a demon or a devil, but creatures inside us, animals, an instinctive lizard, or a terrified dog, or a chattering chimpanzee. All or one of them panicking because something unexpected is going on. And so they take over to save us. And at many times in our lives, and particularly in our past as humans, that's actually been a good thing and kept us alive. But now we don't live wandering the plains as hunter-gatherers. We live in cities. We have cars, we have television, we have all kinds of things that can cause fear and anxiety that aren't actually necessary. And so that sense of reacting to instinct or raw emotions that feels like it's not really us is more and more often not actually helping us. So we need to learn ways to calm down those inner animals. We need to learn with prayer and patience not to give in to those instincts and raw emotions, but instead to keep them in context of all that we've learnt about ourselves and this kingdom that we're striving for. So sometimes it's very appropriate for the lizard part of our brain to react and save our lives in an instant. We want to be aware of the raw emotions that are coming from the mammal part of our brain and what they might be warning us about or encouraging us about. But we also want to continue the quest of wisdom to put all of that in perspective into the bigger vision of who we are as humans, as individuals, as Christians working towards the kingdom of God.